Hi everyone, um, today we're going to talk about IVC ultrasound. So basically the concept is, you know, when you do IVC ultrasound, is that should you give fluid to this patient? The easy concept is that there is a phase where the patient is very dehydrated and when you give fluid, boom, the cardiac output, you know, shoot. And there is a phase where when you give fluid, no matter what, it doesn't matter, the cardiac output will be the same and it's leaking. So to do IVC ultrasound, put your abdominal or echo probe uh, a little bit right to the midline of the patient. The marker should be uh, toward the patient head as in the green circle here. So you will see a black tube, as you can see here, which is vary by respiration a little bit. There is a swoosh up, or it looks like a check mark or like a Nike logo which is this is IVC and there is hepatic vein draining in also. This is a very important point. So basically sometimes you confuse AVC with aorta. So IVC would be like a shake mark. It vary by inspiration. The aorta is actually downward to the patient uh, back, as you can see here. So understand the concept of IVC. So when you breathe in, Imagine the pleural pressure would go down and then, of course, you know, the IVC would drain nicely into the RA. And of course, when it's draining in very easily, the IVC diameters would collapse. So basically, when you inspire, the diameter should change more than half or 50%. This is called a collapsibility index, 50%. But when you have, you know, increased RA pressure, like you have heart failure, that kind of stuff, or poor cardiac function. The pleural pressure goes up. What happened? Of course, the IVC cannot drain in anymore. And then the diameter of IVC is rigid and it looks the same, whether it's inspiration or expiration. This happens also, of course, you know, when you have cardiac tamponade and also we have poorly embolism. So anything that prevent the IVC to draining in the RA, tension in motorax as well, would have the rigid and non-collapsed IVC. So of course, this is an easy 2Ds. The first one, as you can see here, the IVC, the check mark or the Nike logo here, is very thin. When you breathe in, of course, there is no space at all. It means this patient should be volume responsive when he or she come in with shock or dyspnea. However, in another patient on the right of the screen, as you can see here, the IVC is very, very big. It doesn't collapse at all, whether it inspire or expire. So basically, this should be the patient with high CUP or maybe it doesn't respond to volume anymore. This is the sum up of collapsibility index. So basically, if it's small, less than 1.5, sometimes it's 1.7 and collapse a lot more than half, the patient has low CVP, maybe sepsis, hypovolemic dehydration. If the patient has large or more than 2.5 centimeters IVC and not collapse at all, it means, of course, it is the condition that you cannot drain IVC into RA, like we talked before. So what if you want to capture the picture of IVC, you know, to send to the doctor in patient that, okay, they have large IVC or small IVC, what should you do? There is a technique for MOD function, which normally when you push this button, it will capture the picture of IVC in two phases, inspiration and expiration, or on the time that you know goes on. In this picture, as you can see here, the blue uh, tube, it depicts the picture of the tube vary between inspiration and expiration, uh, vary in diameter. So this is uh, IVC in 2D. To do M mode, what you would do, so imagine again, you know, the IVC is tube and it uh, drain up to the RA. You put the M mode light perpendicular to where the tube look uh, as a straight line. So basically, you would cut the IVC in half. And um, it should be two to three centimeters from where the RA is uh, has uh, IVC draining in. However, if you put your uh, M mode line, you know, not perpendicular to the tube, what would happen is actually you wouldn't cut the IVC in half. So you will underestimate the size of IVC that, okay, the IVC is small.
So this is the IVC when it is collapsed. As you can see here, the tube is very, very small. And as you can see on the M mode also, you can see the blue line is actually very, very thin. However, if the IVC is very large, as you can see here, the tube is also very large. There is no variation when the patient inspire or expiration. So what if the patient is intubation or have mechanical ventilation? What happens is that when you put a tube in the patient, you blow up the patient lung in the inspiration phase and it increases the pleural pressure. So what happened? The IVC cannot drain in the RAA anymore. Also, it would result in the distance of the IVC in the inspiration phase. So if the variation or the distance of IVC is more than 18%, it means that your patient would probably is volume responsive, equal to you know when your patient is spontaneous respiration and then have collapsed IVC. So this is the sum of, of this tensibility index. I choose 18% because it's easy to remember. Remember that the tidal volume has to be more than 8 milliliters per kilogram and it has to be sinus rhythm and the PIF also have to be 4 milliliters. What about the IVC? So what about the IVC diameter when the patient is mechanical ventilated? As you can see here, the IVC diameter would correlate with the CVP when the patient has uh, low CVP, but as soon as the CVP goes up, it doesn't correlate it anymore. So to, so to sum up, uh, the spontaneous breathing and intubation patient has a different only in the inspiration phase. So basically in volume responder, if the patient has uh, is spontaneous breathing, uh, the patient would have collapsed IVC and small IVC, while if the patient is intubated, Contrast to collapsed IVC, they would have, you know, this 10 IVC in state. But to easily remember is that if the IVC is very, then it means the patient is volume responder. You should give them fluid. This is the summary of uh, the IVC and evidence base. So basically remember, if the patient is spontaneous breathing and shock, you cannot do this in the patient that has no shift complaint at all. You have to have symptoms and then the IVC under cell. So if the patient is chalk and spontaneous breathing, you can definitely identify low CVP. However, if the patient is ventilated, it doesn't show much in the evidence base that the IVC is correlated with high CVP. So, so summary, a very, very short pitfall. One, don't confuse the IVC versus aorta. So basically this is a sagittal plane when you do you know, ultrasound. Remember that the IVC is going up to the RA while the aorta pushed down to the patient back. So this is, you know, to depict if when you do ultrasound, if you move the probe from right to left, you can actually see aorta. As you can see here, the aorta is pulsatile and have thick white wall and point downward to the patient back. Two, remember that the IVC is cylindrical. So to imagine Another thing to remember is that IVC is cylindrical, so to correctly interpret the results, you have to cut the IVC in half, which of course you will see the IVC in a nicely black tube, as you can see here. However, if you couldn't cut the IVC in half, maybe because your pro position is wrong or maybe the patient position is wrong, what happened is that you would see the IVC is collapsed. But it doesn't because the patient is dehydrated, it's because your probe is not in the middle of the IVC. The third thing is interpretation. Remember that when you took a deep breath inspiration or you have dyspnea, which increase inspiratory effort, you decrease the pleural pressure so much more when you do you know, a normal breath. So what happened is that there is more drain of IVC into RA. And then the collapse of IVC would be so much more than when the patient is normally breathing with no effort. So if the patient is very, very aggressive breathing, you know, very deep near, don't interpret solely on IVC. Rely on other parameters, heart or other um, labs marker or, you know, hemodynamic parameter. Another condition that you have to be careful is when you have increased intra-abdominal pressure or intra-abdominal hypertension. What happens is that 
when you have a lot of SIDs or in a lot of pressure in your abdomen, it pushes the blood from IVC into your area so much more that the IVC would abnormally collapse in the inspiration phase. So again, if the patient has this intra-abdominal hypertension, don't interpret solely on the IVC. This is a summary of you know, the condition that may increase intra-abdominal pressure. It also includes obesity, severe acute pancreatitis. The patient who has acute kidney injury or on CAPD is also one of the conditions that you have to consider. Again, remember that IVC is only one of the jigsaw in your patient. Be careful to interpret the IVC with other parameters, even with ultrasound or something else. Thank you very much and hope you enjoyed the video.